Samson. Representative. Good morning, uh, Senator Hartley, uh, Representative Dargan, and the uh, rest of the esteemed uh, members of the Public Safety and Security Committee. Uh, I'm here before you to testify in opposition uh, to Senate Bill 1076, uh, an act concerning the reduction of gun violence. Uh, let me start by saying that I am all for doing what we can do to make uh, and take the steps necessary to make our society safer and the people in our communities uh, as safe as they possibly can be. Uh, the thing is, I don't believe that any single provision uh, of the proposed bill will lead to that desired effect. The existing assault weapons ban had little, if any, impact on reducing gun violence, and the only result of adding the additional restrictions outlined in this legislation will be to further limit the ability of law-abiding citizens to exercise their Second Amendment liberties, and more importantly, their ability to protect themselves from those who have criminal intent. Uh, statistics on crimes committed with long guns are easy to find. I'm certain that you've received testimony from numerous people uh, in written form and emails uh, showing uh, that there are very, very few crimes committed with long guns. Uh, these types of guns are typically owned by honest, decent people in our communities who enjoy hunting and the shooting sports, high school students who uh, are, uh, compete in target shooting matches, and even teenage boys and girls who represent us on our USA Olympic team. Uh, there's also the economic impact to consider, uh, and I think that everybody noticed the many, many people out in the halls today, uh, which is certainly proof of that. I don't see how the numerous provisions listed in this bill will make any particular firearm uh, safer or uh, more or less deadly. Uh, or uh, how any provisions in this bill would uh, forgive me, prohibit any future acts of violence that might be committed by criminals who are bent on acts of evil. What exactly does uh, an adjustable stock or a pistol grip or a barrel shroud or a flash hider do to make a weapon more or less dangerous? And the answer is absolutely nothing. These are just cosmetic features, and they have no impact. The previous speaker already pointed out that uh, basically we're talking about the appearance of the weapon and not its action. And I think that's, uh, it kind of goes without saying that that seems to be a pointless measure. Uh, provisions to limit the capacity of ammunition magazines, uh, to me, are just as pointless. The single most deadly mass murder in United States history happened at Virginia Tech in 2007. The gunman there, he shot and killed 32 people and wounded 17 others. And one of the weapons used was a 22 caliber handgun with a 10 round magazine. He merely changed magazines over and over again. Uh, the fact is that a magazine can be changed in only seconds, not anywhere enough time for someone to rush an attacker and to disarm them, which I think is what the proponents of this legislation would have you believe. In the case I just mentioned, it happened on a college campus. The victims were mostly able-bodied college students. If there was ever an incident where a limited magazine capacity could have made a difference, I think that was it. Uh, the ultimate and most important truth about all of this is that only law-abiding citizens are ever going to pay attention to these laws anyway. Violent criminals and mass murderers certainly will not. The net effect is that decent law-abiding father who will someday be put in a position to defend his family in the event of a home invasion, will be limited in his ability to do so effectively. The criminal will not. With respect to the very many capable law enforcement officers that exist in each of our uh, communities, the fact is that they will typically only arrive after the incident is already over. The victim is the true first responder. These proposed laws will only curtail their chance of survival. I submit that what we should be doing is finding ways to limit access to firearms to criminals and those with a history of mental illness. I'll note that there is an OLR report that uh, just came out uh, recently, and there's one in the works that I've requested that details uh, how we're doing as far as uh, gun crimes being prosecuted and what sentences are actually served. And I think you'd be shocked to find out how little we actually do. Uh, we can strengthen our NICS system, we can increase lookbacks for mental health, and most importantly, we should begin to vigorously enforce our existing laws. The Connecticut General Assembly passed into law just in the last session the repeal of the death penalty, the foolish and dangerous early release of violent criminals from our prison system. These things are contrary to what we should be doing. 
Um, I think the gun offender registry contained in this bill is a good idea. If it's implemented properly, I will say that. Uh, basically, if we are serious about protecting our population, the answers are out there. We need to invest in school security, uh, improve how we treat and identify those with mental illness, punish criminals. The vast majority of gun violence happens in urban areas with handguns and not rifles, and by career camp criminals that likely should have been in prison in the first place. I suggest that we fix these issues first and leave the law-abiding citizens in our state alone. Thank you, uh, Representative Sim uh, Simpson. Uh, so I just, if, do I then understand you to be saying, with regard to the plea system, that you support mandatory minimums? Yes, I do. Um, and then with regard to the gun offender registry, um, how would you view it being improperly implemented? Well, I just have a concern that uh, what's going to be included and what's not going to be included is a gun crime. And I would hate to see someone who is otherwise a law-abiding citizen who, for some miscommunication or by accident, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, commits a, commits a crime that uh, is not, doesn't have an actual criminal intent. We did have this proposal um, before us I think, a year or two ago, and uh, my recollection is at that time it was for violent crimes committed with a gun. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, in that case, I, I would absolutely support it. Um, right. These are not the law-abiding citizens, at least in my view. Understood. And, and I, I mean, I, I, forgive me, I mean, that was my, my testimony was that I am in support of that one provision of the bill as long as it's implemented properly. That's all. Thank you. Um, questions from 